Today we're going to be talking about how to use a Maclaurin series to estimate an indefinite integral. And in this particular problem, we've been given the indefinite integral of cosine of x minus 1 divided by x. Now, instead of evaluating this integral directly with normal integration techniques, we've been asked to use a Maclaurin series instead to estimate its value, the value of this indefinite integral. Our starting point is going to be the Maclaurin series of cosine of x. We've got cosine of x in our function, so it's a good place to start. And we know, because cosine of x is a well-known Maclaurin series, that this is our Maclaurin series representation here. We also know that these are the first several terms of our cosine of x Maclaurin series. If you don't have this formula, if you don't have this Maclaurin series representation, or you don't have the first several terms of the series, no problem. You can always come up with it on your own. Remember that to find the Maclaurin series, we just start with cosine of x, and then we take the first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, etc. We put this all in a table, and we evaluate each of the derivatives and the original function about the point a equals zero. We get those and we, we divide those by n factorial values, we get the first several terms of the series that way. And from the first several terms of the series, we can derive this Maclaurin series representation. So you can always find it if you don't have the formula and you need to come up with it on your own. And I have lots of videos about how to generate a Maclaurin series. So if you're unclear on how to do that, you can always watch one of those videos. For this video, we're going to assume that you already have the formula and we're just going to start with this point. So the easiest way for us to do this is going to be to replace this cosine of x value in our original integral here with the first several terms of this series. And then we're just going to add on to it this negative 1 and the 1 over x value, this x in the denominator. So what we're going to say is that the integral of cosine of x minus 1 all divided by x dx, our original integral, this is going to be equal to the integral of, and here's where we can replace cosine of x with the first several terms of its series. Remember, they're equivalent, so we're not changing anything. We're just replacing cosine of x here with 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial minus x to the sixth over 6 factorial, etc. And we could keep going, but we only need the first few terms of the series. Then from that, we know we need to subtract 1. That's in our numerator. We're going to subtract 1 in our numerator. In our denominator down here, we're going to divide by x. So really all we've done here is we've just replaced cosine of x with the first several terms of its Maclaurin series. We've kept everything else about the integral the same. But what we can do now, you see in our numerator, we have this positive 1 value at the beginning of our Maclaurin series and a negative 1 value here that came from our original integral, this negative 1 value. Those two are going to cancel with one another. And what we're going to be left with is just this negative x squared over 2 factorial. The other terms of the Maclaurin series, we've got these first several terms all divided by x. So what we want to do now to simplify this integral is to divide through each term by x. That'll get rid of our denominator and simplify our integral. What we're going to be left with then is the integral. When we take negative x squared over 2 factorial and we divide it by x, we're going to get the x in the denominator here to cancel with one of the x's here in our numerator. What we're left with is negative x to the first power divided by 2 factorial. When we divide x to the fourth divided by 4 factorial by x, we're going to get the x in the denominator to cancel, and one of the x's in the numerator to cancel will be left with plus x cubed over 4 factorial. So you can see how this x in the denominator is just reducing each term in our numerator by one degree. So this 2 became 1, the 4 became 3, we'll be left with negative x to the fifth over 6 factorial plus dot 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 dx. And now you can see that our integral has become significantly simpler than how we had originally written it. At this point, it's pretty easy for us to evaluate the integral. All we need to do, remember that the factorial terms in the denominators are kind of like constant coefficients on these power functions here, x, x cubed, x to the fifth. They're just going to remain. All we need to do is add 1 to the exponent of each x term. So this x to the first is going to become x squared. 
but then we need to divide by our new exponent. Our new exponent is two, so we're gonna divide by two, and our two factorial is just gonna stay there. So everything stays the same, except that we increase the degree of our x term by one and divide by that new exponent. Obviously, then what we're gonna have here is x to the fourth plus x to the fourth divided by four times four factorial. And then here we increase the degree of our x term by one, so we get x to the sixth, but then we have to divide by the new exponent, six, so we divide by that and we keep the six factorial and then we'll say plus dot dot dot. And of course we need to add C to account for our constant of integration. So now we have a series here that represents the integral of cosine of x minus one divided by x. All we need to do here is find a series representation of the series that's represented by these first several terms here. So we're going to collapse these using summation notation. And the way that we're going to do that is by realizing that this first term here, this negative x squared divided by 2 times 2 factorial, this is the first term in our new series. This term came from the value n equals 1. And the way that we know that is if we come back up here to our formula for the Maclaurin series of cosine of x, we know that this term here, 1, came from the value n equals 0. This came from n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3. And we know that because if we plug n equals 0, and that, that's what our series tells us here to start with because we have this n equals 0 value here. If we plug 0 into this Maclaurin series representation, what we're going to get is a value of of one. So we know that this one value here came from this series representation when we plugged in n equals zero, and then we just start counting up n equals one, two, and three, the first several terms of this cosine of x Maclaurin series. So if we just follow that down, we know here that this one came from n equals zero, that this x squared over two factorial came from n equals one. Well, at this point, the term that came from n equals zero disappears. This is still the term that came from n equals one, and if we carry that down, we can see that this is the term that came from n equals one. So knowing that, to find a series representation, what we're going to say is we're going to call this the sum from now n equals 1 to infinity. Notice that our original series here started with n equals 0. We're going to start this one with n equals 1 because the first term in our series came from n equals 1. The n equals 0 term dropped away. We don't need to include it. So we don't start with 0 here. We start with 1. So starting with n equals 1, now we need to figure out the representation. Well, as you can see, the first thing we have is this is an alternating series and it starts with negative, right? We have negative, positive, negative, positive, etc. So what we want to do is include this alternating term here, negative 1 raised to the n power. When the series starts with a negative, you want to raise negative 1 to the n power because, of course, if we start with n equals 1 and we plug 1 in for n, we'll get negative 1 raised to the first power, which is just negative 1, and you can see that our n equals 1 term will be negative, which is what we want. So we raise that negative 1 to the n power. Now, how do we deal with this x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth? Well, you can see that this came from n equals 2, and this came from n equals 3. You can see that we have x to the, in fact, 2n power, because the exponent here on our x variable is always 2 times the n value, 2 times 1, 4 is 2 times 2, 6 is 2 times 3. So what we realize we have is x raised to the 2n power. As for the denominator, we have clearly, you can see, the same number from our exponent. So what we're going to have in our denominator for this first 2, 4, 6 is just a value 2n. For the 2 factorial, 4 factorial, 6 factorial, we're going to have quantity 2n factorial. And there's our series representation of these first several terms. Now all we need to do is finalize this by adding the constant of integration c. When we have a series representation and then the constant of integration, we actually like to add the constant of integration at the front so that we don't confuse that it's part of our series here. So what we'll say for our final answer is that this integral here is equal to c, the constant, plus this series representation, which we generated from the first several terms of this series above here. That's how we can use a Maclaurin series, in this particular example, the Maclaurin series of cosine of x, to estimate an indefinite integral.